today at Happy Garage, we're making charcoal and fire. <laughs> making your own charcoal is a bit of work, but it's fun and it satisfies that primal urge for fire and food. You'll need a safe place to do all this, and it should go without saying that you should have a water hose nearby that can reach just in case things don't go well. Make the burn barrel and kiln by recycling a 55 gallon drum and a couple old propane tanks. Yep, be careful with that too. You can also keep your yard trash and a few old pallets out of the landfill by using them for fuel. Making your own charcoal means it doesn't have to be packaged or shipped like that store-bought stuff, so by some stretch of the imagination you could say it's good for the environment. On top of all of that, you know where this charcoal came from, just like anything else you make from scratch. So if you're a purist about your barbecue recipe, there is no beating the bragging rights earned by using your charcoal. I've even given it out as a gift, but be careful here because some people may take offense to being given coal for Christmas. So here's a closer look at the charcoal kiln that I'll be using today. This particular one is made out of two propane tanks welded together. What you use for your charcoal kiln is not terribly important, provided that, number one, it's not combustible, so things like plastic and wood are obviously out of the question, and two, uh, that it finds that balance between not letting air into the container and allowing some pressure buildup to escape from the container. When I pack this particular container, uh, I'll usually put the larger firewood on the outside. It's going to have the greatest exposure to heat and go ahead and play Legos or Tetris with it if you need to, uh, to get the most efficient combination of, of wood inside the container. With the kiln packed tight, it's time to put the lid on and lift the kiln into the burn barrel. Starting a fire in a burn barrel is relatively easy. Just start with newspaper or cardboard, or my personal favorite, junk mail and bills. The burn barrel creates a nice chimney effect that wraps heat around the kiln, so in no time the kiln will be up to temperature and converting firewood into charcoal. I'll usually find something else to do outside, like fire up the smoker and use some of the last batch of charcoal. Whatever you decide, you'll need to keep the fire going for three to four hours to complete the batch. I use about a third of my firewood just to establish a good bed of coals. After that, it's just a few pieces at a time to maintain heat. If you forget about your fire and it goes out, don't worry about it, just re-establish the fire and you can pick up where you left off. Leave the lid on your charcoal kiln throughout the entire process and for several hours afterwards. If oxygen is allowed to get to your charcoal, it may very well ignite and burn up the entire batch. Not that I've ever made that mistake before. It's the next day and the charcoal has had a chance to cool down, so let's take a look and see how it went. We're looking for the charcoal to be light in weight and totally black in color. Uh, this piece is definitely lighter than it was before, but we can see a little bit of light brown, so maybe a little bit more time in the kiln would have been good uh, for this particular piece. I'm not too bothered by this though. I have a stick burner smoker that this little bit more solid charcoal works well in. If we were grilling, maybe it would be a better idea to have pieces like this that are so light and dry that they're crumbly. Most of this batch fits that description, so I'm gonna call it a win. That's all there is to making your own lump charcoal. Now you're ready to fire up your grill or your smoker and fix your favorite dish. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe to see what comes next. Until next time, thanks for watching Happy Garage, where we're always working on something. Bye now.